Hello class. Today we're going to start unit 10 uh, over parts of congruent triangles. So first we have some vocabulary terms. Uh, congruent figures, you should already know, are figures that have the same shape and the same size. So congruent triangles are triangles that have the same shape and same size, which also means that the corresponding angles and the corresponding sides are congruent. So let's go ahead and take a look at example number one. Here it says that angle A, B, C, triangle A, B, C is congruent to triangle D, E, F. Now the order of these letters is very important. So angle A would be congruent to A is the first letter, D is the first letter. B is the one in the center, E is the one in the center. Uh, C is on the end, F is on the end. So these are the congruent angles, the corresponding angles. So we talk about line A, B, A, B. Then congruently we'll be talking about D, E. Notice that it's A, B, and then D, E. Now if we say B, C, then we want E, F. And so A, C, first, last, would be D, F. First, last. And all of these, since they are lines, need lines drawn on top. So, the order that we put things in is very important. Let's go and take a look at example number two. In example number two, they say that triangle XYZ is congruent to WMN. And we want to determine if these are true or false. Well, it's first when they've rearranged the letters. They've done Y, Z, and then X. So the second, the third, and the first, WMN, WMN, and that's first, second, and third. This would be false. The order is very important. So ZXY, three, one, two, within WM, three, one, two. The order has remained the same. So yes, this is true. Y, Z, X, second, third, first, N, M, W, third, second, first. These are not the same order, so we're talking false. And then Z, Y, X, just a simple reverse order, N, M, W. Again, we're talking in the reverse order, so this one is true. Now, again, how I did this was I just used these as the original. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. And compared them with my answers down here to make sure that the numbers were in the same order. talk about example number three. Here they give us some pictures and we need to figure out some information to decide what's congruent. And they tell us that EHG, EHG is congruent to KFG, KFG. So EHG, KFG. I just did the numbers to kind of help. But I'm going to go ahead and look back up here. If I say that angle E is the first one, then I need to also say that's congruent to angle K, the very first one. H is my second one, so F is my second one. G is my third, 
and g is my third. Now this last statement should be obvious that g is congruent to g. Um, but in actuality we're talking about two different angles over here. So I need to go ahead and be a little more specific. We'll say E G H. That's E G H. And then E was represented with K, so K G F. K G F. Because there are two angles, there's actually four angles represented by G. I had to be just a little bit more specific. Now these are our angle congruencies. Now we need our side congruencies. So first I'm going to go with EH, my first two, which means I need my first two, K, F. Uh, next I'm going to do with the latter two, so HG with FG. And then my third, I'm going to go first last. So EG with KG. And again, because these are lines, I need to go ahead and put my bars over all of these. Now, having two letters without a bar on top means that I'm asking for the distance. And yes, the distances are also congruent, but specifically we want to say that these line segments are congruent. So if we're talking number four, we have the A, B, C, the same as C, D, A. So if we're talking about angle A, what we're really saying is we're saying B, A, C. because I have multiple angles over here for A. So I'm saying angle BAC it's congruent with the C portion and so it's going to be congruent with DCA. Again, notice I went 2, 1, 3. I needed to go 2, 1, 3 a little bit cleaner. Now, if I say angle B, uh, I can just use B because there's no other angles here. And then I can go over here, the second point, D. No angles there. I can just call that angle D. It's very clear what angle I'm talking about. And then my last angle here, we're talking about C. Uh, more specifically, when you get a little more specific, we'll say BCA. Okay, that was two, three, one. So we're talking angle A, it's the one in the center. Uh, two, three, one would be DAC. So those are my congruent angles. Now I want my congruent sides. Well, first two are AB and the first two are CD. And the second two BC with the second set DA and then first last AC with first last CA. And because these are line segments, I need to go back and put all of my line segments in. Here we're going to go ahead and talk about example number five. We want to complete the congruency statement. Well, I like alphabetical order, so we're going to grab this first one in alphabetical order. We're going to call A the first one, then we're going to go to B the second one, and C the third one. A, B, C. We need to make sure that we match them correctly with this triangle. 
Well, A was the right angle, so we need to find our right angle. Our right angle here happens to be D. So that's our first one. Now, B had two markers. Well, I need to go through and find which one has the two markers. That would be angle E. So E would go next. And C, that has only one marker. So does F. It also has just one marker. Now, here they were kind of us kind enough to go ahead and put this into alphabetical order, D, E, F. It may not be in alphabetical order next time. The alphabetical order of the letters, that's not what matters. What matters is that you match the angles. Okay, you need, put, you need to tell the angles in the same order. Now, example number six is a little bit different. Um, there's actually enough information here to prove these triangles congruent, uh, but we will get into that later in this lesson. Uh, right now, the important thing is, what information can I prove just by looking at the drawing? Well, let's see. I've got a single arc on angle D. And I've got a single arc on angle U. So I can say that angle D is congruent to angle U because they both have the single marks. K and L have double marks. So angle K would be congruent to angle L. Now, W and A, they don't have any marks. Uh, but that doesn't mean that they are congruent. That just means that they're not marked. So I can't go and say that W is congruent to A. I just don't know that. Not yet. Well, let's go ahead and let's look at some sides. I've got a single hash mark over here on DW. I've got another single hash mark over here at AU. That tells me that DW is congruent to AU. That's what the hash mark means. And then if I come over here, I've got that double hash mark. Uh, it's on KW. And so I know that is congruent to LU. And again, these are line segments. So I marked them as congruent. Now, I could be a little bit extra picky. Uh, notice that K had two, W has nothing, L has two, w, uh, U has one, D has one, W has nothing, but A has nothing and uh, U has one. I've actually got these backwards, but it really doesn't matter as far as line segments because AU is congruent to UA. So it really doesn't matter that much uh, for problems like this. When we're talking about the triangle relationships, I do want you to have them in order. Now our last example. We've got two triangles. We've got dog, and we've got cat. And they tell us that they are congruent. Well, that helps a little things. Well, DO, they say is 10. OG, they say is 12. And DG, they give us as 16. And they tell us that AT is 2X plus 6. And we want to figure out what X equals. Well, I can go ahead, and I know these are congruent. I know that DO is 10, which means that CA is also 10. I know that OG is 12, so I know that AT is 12. And I know that um, DG is 16, so CT is also 
16. All right here I've got some information. I know that 12 equals 2x plus 6. Just need to get x by itself. And I know what x equals. So this was 10-1. Uh, good luck working on your assignment. Thank you.